everybody welcome back to my channel I'm just back from a lovely morning walk with Skye it was super frosty probably the frostiest frostiest morning we've had this winter and I love walking in winter I am not a, a summer walker I don't like getting too hot but in the winter I like bundling up in lots of layers and I'm to keep taking layers on and off and just sort of staying cozy but it being really cold outside it was just yeah really really pretty and I think we're due snow uh, later in the week or so so that's going to be pretty exciting so I'll share that with you if we do get some snow um, but this week I thought I would chat a little bit more about Christmas um, because we are well into December now here and you know preparations are <laughs> wrapping up for Christmas time and I wanted to share my kind of experience um, and what I do to celebrate Christmas in a perhaps slower way and in a way that aligns with my with my values around minimalism and things like that. So I wanted to chat with you guys about that today and also I'm heading to a Christmas market later today so I'll take you guys with me. That's going to be in Inverness and uh, it's going to be in Eden Court which is this really lovely building that does lots of like markets and things like this and there's also a theatre um, so that's going to be really nice and festive so I'll take you along uh, with me there. Um, before I head out though I do want to introduce the sponsor of today's video and that is Skillshare. I have been a really big fan of Skillshare for years. I've personally used it for, for the last few years and paid for it myself. I think it's a brilliant platform. If you've not heard of it before, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands and thousands of classes across a whole range of topics. And it's a really great place to get inspired and learn new skills. So for me, myself personally, it's been fundamental in teaching me lots of skills to do with my own business. So starting my side hustle, um, Hippie Highland Living. So I learned um, a lot of stuff about writing when I first started blogging and stuff about photography and content generally, content strategy and video editing, loads of really cool classes and that kind of stuff. But I've also used it um, more personally for like personal development or hobbies. So I've done some lovely watercolour classes on there and I've also done some stuff around self-development, reflection, productivity, selling hobbies, all sorts of things that I like to like read books about. There's also classes like that on Skillshare. One of the classes that I really enjoyed on Skillshare was Everyday Minimalism by Erin Boyle. So that's a really lovely class that talks about really practical things that you can learn about minimalism and incorporate into your life. So I watched that first, I think a couple of years ago and I've rewatched it since. And it's got some really good words of wisdom, especially about minimizing areas of your home and problem, problem areas of your home and just living a bit simpler. So that is one I would definitely recommend. So if you want to try Skillshare yourself, I know a lot of us have a bit of extra time, maybe over the festive season or are looking into the new year, maybe want to pick up some new hobbies or do a bit of personal development, maybe even start a side hustle, then Skillshare are offering guys a unique opportunity with the first 1,000 people to click the unique link in my description will get a 30 day free trial. I think that's really worthwhile personally, it's added a huge amount of value to my life and I recommend it to everybody. If you do decide to try out Skillshare or you have already used Skillshare then I'd love to hear your class recommendations, any courses you really enjoyed so do pop them in the comments, I'd love to, love to read those. But anyway, thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video and I'm going to get myself together and we're going to go to the Christmas market.
we have snow <laughs> it's the first snow of the season which is very exciting this guy's looking at me because she's like who are you talking to <laughs> i've just come out for her second morning walk now it's actually light enough to see the snow it was really exciting this morning to open the door and yeah instantly have my boots crunching um in some snow which is exciting it's only a wee bit to be honest it's a bit of a a tiny little round, a bit of a smidgen uh, to start us off for a year but it's enough to, to be excited about so I thought I'd definitely have to come out and enjoy it and I think it's going to be quite a nice day, it's absolutely freezing, it's not going to get really above freezing today I don't think, it's going to stay pretty cold all day so I've got all my, <laughs> all my layers on um, but yeah snow is always a weird one for me, it's, it's a bit bittersweet like I get that excitement <laughs> Um, that childish excitement of seeing snow and I think in our family snow's always been a big deal because apart from now me living in the Highlands we never really lived anywhere with a lot of snow um, but our family now live on a Scottish island and it just doesn't get a huge amount of snow so it has been like a novelty for me moving up here but um, there's also a sadness to it and I think that's just a personal thing like I had quite a lot of grief a couple of years ago um, during the winter so I lost my cat which was pretty tragic I used to live near a train line um, and he got he got hit by a train and there was only three and yeah he was my world so that was something I still get sad <laughs> clearly thinking about um, but yeah it has that kind of memory and grief attached to it because it's in the middle of the winter and it was a really really snowy night when we were trying to find him but at the same time it's almost like oh it's like a nice reminder because it's like oh I get to think about him. He wasn't he wasn't keen on the snow. <laughs> Not like Sky. You can see her down there. She loves the snow. She loves all the smells. But um, and I also had some sad news this morning. Um, my friend lost her dog last night. Um, had to be put to sleep, which I could just like completely feel what she's going through. And I think a lot of us are the same. A lot of animal lovers on here. A lot of empathetic people. Um, sense to people so yeah I think we can all agree that it's really difficult and I think this time of year loss in general it does bring up those sad memories for a lot of people if you have lost someone you love and it's not always you know you feel this pressure to be super happy at this time of year and it's not always possible for everyone so I think that's something I'm going to touch on later so I'm going to finish um finish my walk with Sky because my hand is absolutely freezing <laughs> holding this finish my walk with Sky and then go back to the tiny home get warm and I want to chat a little bit about how I choose to celebrate Christmas in you know a more slow way and as a, a minimalist and also as an introvert because that comes into it as well so I will catch up with you guys in a little bit Like a lot of areas in my life, I have definitely learned to slow down my Christmas over the years. I do have some very fond memories of Christmas as a child. I think um, it's always been a favourite family holiday and I think I'm blessed with that. I think not everyone's childhood Christmases have always been really joyful. Um, so I have some, some very fond memories, but I think into my adult years, I did start to struggle a little bit with it in terms of, you know, I have been living more minimally and more sustainably for a good few years now and, and I'm also vegan and there's a lot of things about Christmas that doesn't align with that. I really get a bit um, annoyed <laughs> in a lot of ways with all the sort of sales and everyone just trust buying lots and lots of stuff and there's so much waste involved with Christmas and I think it kind of takes away from what I think are all the good things about Christmas. So for me, I try and let it be a time where I properly rest and I spend time with my family. I don't live particularly close to my family, so it's really nice to go home and spend a good amount of time with them. But I've learned some like tactics along the way to help me still enjoy Christmas uh, as a minimalist and also as an introvert, because that's definitely another 
side of it and for instance I don't ask for presents for from my family um, so I do if they want to give me something I suggest a charity I'd like them to donate to um, because I have my birthday in November anyway so if there's anything I really would like um, then that's the time I could ask whereas at Christmas I think it's a really nice time to give back my mum still manages to get me a wee stocking full of stuff um, I just think she enjoys doing that so <laughs> I'm not going to protest and she always gets me lovely things that um, yeah, that are very me and I really really appreciate and same with friends it's only a couple now that we get you know a few gifts for each other nothing really scaled down gift buying over the years and I think particularly with living costs increase there's a lot more pressure on everyone financially and I do think that's something to bear in mind and I actually wrote in my newsletter recently something a simple guide to sustainable gift guide gift buying um, and that also often leads to being cheap alternatives and one of the things I say in that is consider not buying anything um, for friends and have that conversation with people because we're all in the same boat so they might appreciate just doing something together instead of giving gifts this year so I think that's that's how I kind of get around the gift giving thing and obviously I try and buy if I do buy things I do try and make sure it's supporting small businesses where I can and as sustainable as possible but also something that they'll they'll enjoy and I think um as an introvert like I just do what I normally do in the sense I don't overcommit to any social occasions I don't really go to any Christmas do's necessarily. The way I socialise tends to be, you know, I'll go around to a friend's and watch a Christmas movie maybe, or go out for hot chocolate, like it's quite similar. I don't feel pressured. Um, again, that's the kind of people I surround myself with. I don't feel pressured to go to big parties because again, they're just not, they're just not me anymore. I, I don't really enjoy that. And I think it, it can be quite a difficult time. Like I said earlier as well, there is that aspect of plenty of loneliness during the Christmas season and pressure to have the perfect Christmas. And I just want to say that no one has that really, that doesn't exist. And I don't want you to feel that you have to do all these things that are traditional. You can do Christmas whatever way you want to. I personally think if I didn't have my family or even my mum to go home to, I don't even know if I would celebrate Christmas. I think it'd be really nice to almost do something different, like around the winter solstice. I really like the winter solstice. I get more excited about that now than I do about Christmas. So you'll have to let me know if you're the same and if you are a Christmas person, if you're not, and any tactics that you take to get through this season that can be challenging for people that are yeah, more minimalist, introverts, or, or just more, more sensitive. And I just think it's important to find some quiet time and use this time to, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, perhaps you don't from a religious point of view or whatever. I think at this time of year as a season, you know, with it getting so dark and so cold, it's a really nice time to just sit back, you know, take some quiet time, some self-reflection and rest, because I think that's the best gift we can give ourselves at Christmas but yeah that's some of my thoughts again I think I'll be writing a little bit more if I've not done it already on my newsletter so that is free to subscribe to by the way and I always have a link in the subscription and you have access to any oncoming writing so write on a weekly basis or any previous writing that I've done as well if you subscribe to that so I'll leave the link in case you're interested and this will be the last video you see from me this year so i am going to give myself a couple of weeks off i'm going to practice as i preach <laughs> and have some rest over the holiday season and i'll be back with you guys in the new year which is really exciting because i love the energy around a new year that's probably my preference and um, compared to christmas so i've got lots of stuff planned on this channel for then so do subscribe if you'd like to continue following along with my wee journey and thank you very much for your support this year. My first year on YouTube, it's been a whirlwind and it's been so much better than I could ever have thought and that's all done to you guys. So I wish you a lovely, restful, peaceful Christmas and I'll see you guys in the new year.